plays very, very quickly on another one. Or, or. Okay, um, good morning everyone. Um, it is now nine o'clock and so I resume the hearings part of this examination of the North Hertfordshire <coughs> Local Plan 2011 to 2031. Um, first of all, can everyone hear me well enough? Thank you. Um, can I remind you, please, that if you do have a um, mobile phone or other electronic gadget with you, please could you make sure that it's either switched off or set to silent whilst the hearing's in session? Um, and if you haven't already done so, please make sure that you sign today's attendance sheet before you leave. Um, if I do have any members of the press present, please could I ask that you also sign the same sheet, but do make it clear which media outlet you represent. Um, could I ask someone from the council to remind us what we should do in the event of a fire or other emergency? Yes, we're not ex expecting any um, fire alarm this morning, but if the fire alarm does go off, please could you exit by the, um, the doors in the corners of the room and make your way to the front of the building and meet um, on the pavement um, on, the, on the street front. Thank you for that. Um, I understand that, um, as before, um, our microphones are also recording um, our hearing session today. Um, is there anyone participating that isn't comfortable with that arrangement? <coughs> okay, thank you. My name is Simon Barclay. I'm a planning inspector and a chartered town planner. I've been appointed by the Secretary of State to hold this examination into the soundness of the local plan and to produce a report um, of my conclusions and recommendations in relation to any actions or changes needed uh, in, relation to cha in relation to soundness. Um, specifically, my role is to assess whether the plan satisfies the requirements of the 2004 Act, the relevant regulations relating to the preparation of the plan and whether it is sound. In order to be sound, the plan should be positively prepared, effective and consistent, uh, justified effective and consistent with national policy um, as defined by and large at least in the National Planning Policy Framework, the NPPF. Uh, Louise St. John Howe um, is my programme officer, and uh, she's just walking over there. Um, she's an independent officer of the examination, uh, working under my guidance, and uh, she undertakes the administration of the examination, in effect acting as a conduit for communication between me um, and everyone participating. So if you do have uh, something that you wish to raise with me, please do so via Mrs. St. John Howe in the first instance. Uh, my guidance note outlines the procedures to be followed at the hearing sessions. Um, and um, as previously, they'll be in the form of a structured discussion, um, which I shall lead quite simply um, following the matters and issues um, as I've set them out on my matters and issues paper. So hopefully um, you will have that um, with you. I haven't produced any separate agendas or anything like that. Um, I like to try and keep things as simple and straightforward as I possibly can. 
Um, as the hearing session goes along, um, I will invite people to speak at particular points, um, but uh, if you do have something that um, you'd like to contribute, um, please do indicate uh, by appending um, your nameplate, and I'll bring you into the discussion at an appropriate point. Um, we will take a short um, mid-morning break, um, and one again in the afternoon with um, potentially a slightly more generous break for lunch. Um, if I could have now um, brief introductions um, around the table, starting with the council side. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Miss Suzanne Ormsby, Queen's Council, and I'm the barrister for the council. Morning, sir. Helen Leach, Landscape and Urban Designer, North Hearts District Council. Good morning, Chris Constable from Wood. Um, I'm providing heritage advice to the council. Good morning, sir. Roger Flowerday from Hertfordshire County Council as a highway authority. Sorry, Robert Hare, uh, representing Ashwell. Uh, John Hare, representing <coughs> Ashwell. Councillor David Barnard, I'm the uh, ward councillor for Hitchwood Offer and Who Ward in North Hart <coughs> District Council and the Hertfordshire County Council. I'm Councillor David Short, Ashwell Parish Council, and I'm Chairman of the uh, Neighbourhood Plan Working Group. Um, good morning, I'm Lydia Voyas, I'm from Savills, I'm here today on behalf of New Souls Park Start. Good morning, I'm Gerald Morris, District Councillor for Ermine Ward, thank you. Good morning, I'm Reverend Sonia Falaski ray and I'm representing Barkway Parish Council. Good morning, uh, Stuart Booth, representing Beck Holmes. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, good morning, everyone, and um, welcome. Um, are there any um, procedural questions or any outstanding or housekeeping matters? No, thank you. In which case, then, I'll turn to the agenda for um, today. The housing allocations and the settlement boundaries, the Category A villages, and I will first of all turn to Ashwell. Um, what I'm going to do is follow a format um, that I've generally um, been using, um, which is to ask the council, um, first of all, um, to take us through my issues 11.1, 11.2 and 11.3, um, which is pretty much to say um, for the council to tell me um, everything that they want to um, about the proposed allocation um, in Ashwell, um, and then I'll open it up to everyone else that's um, here to participate in relation to in relation to Ashwell. Um, so who do I look to on the council side in the first instance? Myself. Ms. L Ms. Leach. Um, yeah. Could I just check, could everyone um, try their hardest to make sure that their um, nameplate is clearly visible to me? Okay, that's, that's great. Thank you. Ms. Leach. Thank you. Landowner um, has confirmed um, that the site is available um, in their representations to, to Regulation 19, and um, a planning application uh, for this site, AS1, um, a planning application was submitted in July 2016. Um, in terms of um, demonstrating that safe and appropriate access for vehicles and pedestrians can be provided. Um, we, um, vehicular access is available off Claybush Lane. If I could just ask you, sir, to have a, a look at the um, proposals plan and um, the site-specific um, criteria within policy AS1. Um, see that um, the, the site AS1 appears um, landlocked, um, Yes. but um, we have put a criteria in AS1 for provision of pedestrian access into the village. Um, I would like to propose an amendment to um, include an additional bullet point um, in terms of provision of vehicular access onto Claybush Road. Just to clarify the matter. Yes, 
Because I'm glad you clarified that, because that was one of my um, questions, how cars would get in and out. Um, right, so um, that is to say, then, is it that access must be from um, Claybush Road? It's vehicular access. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, and that's something that can be achieved in land ownership terms, is it? Yes, the um, developer has confirmed in their Matter 11 um, statement that they have um, an option on that land. Hmm. An option. So that is to say, is it that the landowner um, agrees um, that that the developer in question um, gets first dibs um, on, on the side? So yes, I mean, an option agreement is, is, is a legal, legally binding agreement um, which gives control um, to the person who has the benefit of the option over that land. And, and that relates to land that would be needed for the access? That's my understanding, so yes. So we would have then in the policy two separate bullets, one um, requiring the provision of pedestrian access into the village and one requiring that vehicular access would be from Claybush Road. Um, are they to be two specifically segregated accesses? Is that, is that what's needed um, here? No. Um, I suppose potentially we could put them both into the same bullet point, but I think it needs to um, clarify that... Um, vehicular access needs to be provided off Claybush Lane. Okay, so there, there could also potentially be a pedestrian access onto Claybush Road as well, is there? That is correct. Oh, okay. So could, could everyone hear Ms Leach then? Oh, 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 okay, can I ask her to, to speak up a little Sorry, bit? Sorry, thank you. Yes. The provision of pedestrian access into the village um, in the, is a requirement of the policy. Um, is there not one at present? Um, from the site? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's what that means, um, pedestrian access into the village, that's from the site into the village. Yeah? Yes. Uh, um, the site itself is, um, as I've said before, landlocked, so there, there needs to be um, some access from the site onto either Claybush Road or Ashwell Street up to the north. There is a strip or a narrow band of land between the, the site, um, AS1, running north to Ashwell Street. Um, and a narrow band of land, is that any sort of right of way or is it land owned by the, um, the site landowner mm -hmm. or, 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 or what? Yes, the, um, the developer has uh, an option over that land to provide pedestrian access to um, Ashwell Street. The narrow band. Um, the, the 
the site is de deliverable. Um, it's been considered through the Schla and considered to be a suitable location um, for development. Um, the infrastructure delivery plan and the local uh, plan viability assessment. My, my, my apologies, oh, Mr. Oh, you, you, are, you are clean na naturally um, softly spoken. If I could ask you to, to speak up a little. Mm. The infrastructure delivery plan and local plan viability assessment update show that the, the development is, is deliverable in infrastructure planning terms and the significant, the likely significant environmental effects of allocating the site have been considered through the sustainability appraisal. Um, again, the site uh, specific criteria um, for the site are, are set out in, in policy AS1. Um, um, there um, are issues relating to um, heritage assets, namely um, the nearby location of the scheduled ancient monument, Arbury Banks. Sorry, bear with me. Um, it was called what, sorry? Arbury Banks. Thank you. Yep. And um, archaeological areas. Um, if I can just um, get you to return to the question of infrastructure um, for a moment. Um, I see from the infrastructure delivery plan um, table that contributions are expected um, in relation to education and health. Is that right? That is correct, sir. And could you just tell me briefly what those those are about? Um, it would be to do with um, the uh, provision of um, uh, the school, the primary school, and um, um, the doctor surgeries. So that's a primary school in Ashwell, is it? That is correct. Yes. doctor's surgery that's in Ashwell uh, yeah. um, okay so you were telling me I think about um, likely impacts and environmental constraints um, yes um, to do with um, the scheduled ancient monument um, and listed um, buildings within uh, Ashwell itself listed buildings involved is that the St Mary's Church it is correct yes and the issue well you tell me what what's the issue about I think I'll get um, Chris um, constable to explain a bit more about that good morning yes um, we were instructed to undertake a heritage assessment of the site at Ashwell the scheduled monument is approximately 600 metres southwest of the site, and there's open land between the scheduled monument and the proposed development site. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, at present, there's, there's clear views across sort of open farmland between the scheduled monument and the proposed development site. The majority of the village of Ashwell is sort of located within the valley around the church, and the conservation area is located in that area. So. Other than views to the southwest of existing buildings on the main road adjacent to the site, um, the Hillport has relatively open views across the countryside. So this is um, existing buildings on Claybush Road. 
Um, developing the proposal site has the potential to improve views of those buildings by screening them with, with more planting within and on the boundaries of the proposal site. My, my apologies, I, did, I didn't follow that. Could you, could you um, run that past me again? Okay. Um, viewing towards the development site, build existing buildings on Claybush Road yeah. um, are sort of clearly visible within views as there's relatively open agricultural land. Between from, the are you talking about from within the village? From within the um, scheduled monument. Right, okay. So it's views southwest towards the development site. So views towards the proposal site from the scheduled monument. <laughs> Sorry, bear with me. Yep. It's currently housing on Claybush Road, which appears quite prominently in these views. Um, a number of the buildings are white rendered and they have sort of red clay tile roofs, so they're quite prominent and distinct in the landscape. Yeah. Developing the site would enable more screening to be introduced between the between these scheduled monuments and these existing buildings and any new buildings, which would improve the setting of the monument by reducing the impact of modern development in views towards the proposal site. Okay, I understand. Again, the proposal site has some appearance in views as one travels towards the village along Claybush Road as you drop down the hill. Um, you, as you move along that street, you obtain exceptionally fine views of the tower and spire of St Mary's Church. proposal site will intrude in some of these views, but the, the best views are obtained um, in the streets adjacent to where the access would be onto Claybush Road, where the church tower and spire is effectively framed as you look down the street towards it across the valley. Sorry, I didn't quite follow that. So uh, I got the point that the site will intrude in some views, you say? Some views, but it won't intrude into the, the better views are obtained from the main road, Claybush Road, roughly where the site is, as you get a, you get a very clear, distinct view of the tower and spire of the church, closer into the village. Again, its impact on the church is intruding into some views on Claybush Road, there's no other impact upon the, significant, the heritage significance of the church. Okay. Thank you. Ms Leach. Going on to 11.2 um, about the um, whether the um, proposed housing allocation is justified and appropriate in terms of the likely impacts. I think, yes, the proposed housing allocation is in Ashwell is justified and appropriate. I think we've gone through some of the, uh, the reasons before in previous um, hearing sessions in terms of needing um, um, sites to uh, fulfill our... Um, <coughs> Sorry, could I ask you to speak up Sorry. again? Um, we've gone <coughs> through the issues before about the need to find um, uh, allocation sites to <coughs> fulfill our housing needs. Um, Ashwell is a Category A village um, and um, the um, which is where some of our um, um, development is um, directed um, towards um, and this site provides an opportunity to contribute towards the district's five-year supply. Um, this site 
um, is Grade 3 agricultural land and is currently um, bounded by um, existing hedgerows and has some internal hedgerows and planting as well. And the site um, slopes um, downwards towards the village um, from south uh, to north. Um, within the um, criteria, site-specific <coughs> criteria in AS1, we have um, a bullet point acknowledging that sensitive de design and layout is required in terms of ridgeline and setting within the landscape and that additional planting is required on the east and west boundaries, picking up from um, uh, Mr. Uh, Constable's comments about um, screening and the views. Um, uh, so screening to the properties on Claybush Road and also Arbury Banks. Um, okay, it's, it's bounded by um, hedgerows. Is, is it important that those hedgerows be retained? Yes, it is. Um, should the policy say <coughs> that? Yes, it should. We should make an so is that to say then the council puts forward a main modification requiring retention of the uh, boundary hedgerows? Yes. talked about the potential impacts upon the heritage assets and um, the nearby the views of um, St Mary's Church and the um, providing an archaeological survey yeah. um, um, going on to question 11.3 is the proposed allocation the most appropriate option given the reasonable alternatives the um, proposed allocation of site AS1 represents the most appropriate option for the expansion of Ashwell. Um, HOU1 on Appendix 2, page 53, shows that two other potential sites in Ashwell were considered. Um, they were not allocated but are included within the um, proposed um, village uh, boundary and can come forward as windfall sites. Okay. Um, <coughs> is that something that has required an alteration to the boundary through this plan? We have, if you to turn to uh, the... I know I'm sort of jumping oh. ahead here slightly, but... Um, or are they sites that are already within the settlement they're, boundary? They're already within the, the, our proposed settlement boundary, yes. <coughs> um, you said the proposed settlement boundary there, and then what I was getting at is whether or not through, through this plan, you're, you're changing the existing village boundary in order to accommodate those sites, or whether they, they, they were always simply within the settlement boundary? They weren't, they're not in the current settlement boundary, but they are within curtilages of um, plots with <laughs> within the, the, the built up area of, uh, or the settlement area of Ashwell. O okay, um, <coughs> but this is an area where this plan proposes to alter the settlement boundaries. That Let's say yes. If you, if you look to the plan attached, hopefully you've got a colour version, because I, I don't, and it's difficult to see if you don't have a colour version. But if you look at the plan that's attached to our statement on AS1 at the back, you, you'll see that okay. <coughs> there's the current settlement boundary, and then the, so you'll see where it's proposed to extend the settlement boundary of Ashwell. And I think the, um, the two sites that Miss Betch has just been um, referring to um, is the site, the field immediately to the north of Hunts Ridge and um, immediately to the north of the um, Little Cross and to the left of Tumulus. If you go 
travel directly north, you'll see that there's a little group of buildings, and as I understand it, it's the field that lies immediately to the north of those little buildings, which are proposed within the proposed settlement boundary. And I think the, um, yes, that's exactly. Um, okay, we are, we are jumping ahead, um, but I think I'll, I'll maybe just deal with it now as we're talking about it. Um, is there a particular reason um, then, I mean, has that boundary change been deliberate so that those sites could come forward? Yes, the, the boundary has been changed to um, encompass um, uh, potential for other sites sites to come forward, but also um, to include development that has come forward since the current boundary was um, defined, um, just to the south of the um, sites that have just been talked about, where it says um, tumulus, there is a, an additional um, an extension there that, that has already been um, developed. Oh, right, OK. So is that something that's, n that's not shown on this plan? It is, or it is shown it on is this shown plan. As an, it, it has been developed. Oh, it's not shown as developed. Right. Okay. So, right. Because when I look at this plan, it looks like you know the boundary's been pulled out around various fields. Probably. I mean, I haven't visited Ashwell yet, so so I don't know. I, I will be doing <coughs> that in due course. Um, but it, th there are other buildings that aren't shown here. Yes. Right. Okay. <laughs> I I understand. Um, so. Um, the council then is allowing those sites to come forward by altering the development boundary. Is there a particular reason why they weren't taken forward as allocations? Um, I think it's just um, felt that they were um, within the, the the main settlement area, and to to allow, uh, as it's a category village, to allow development to come forward um, to. Um, create a boundary that allowed that to happen rather than um, um, have those sites identified separately. It, the, the boundary um, that is proposed is a more rational boundary um, along Ashwell Street to create a, a sort of strong um, settlement boundary. Um, well, whilst we're, we're on the point, because we're taking in issue 11.4 at the same time now, and basically talking about everything <laughs> in relation to Ashwell, um, is there anything else that the council needs to tell me about the boundary changes here? Um, it includes... Um, 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 an extension to include... Um, um, built development that wasn't included um, before within the boundary, and also yeah. that's to the um, northwest of the of the village, and also on the um, eastern northeastern side of the village, um, areas have been included, which are um, to uh, rationalise the um, settlement boundary and to provide the opportunity for um, windfall sites to come forward. Um, in the future. Um, to rationalise the boundary, you say? Yes. Because what well, it just no <coughs> longer reflected what was on the ground. Yes, correct. <coughs> uh, 
and also to allow wind full size. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Is there anything else that um, the council thinks that I ought to know at this stage before I'm um, opening up the floor to <coughs> others? everything thank you okay who's here to me oh, right. very, very quick off the mark dr. Eyre. Yeah, again I'd like to take issue with um, pedestrian access um, this is said to be uh, to the north of the site onto Ashwell Street uh, Ashwell Street is a privately owned street it's not adopted by uh, the, the council at all uh, and to uh, access the uh, facilities of the village, and I stress village because in a lot of the uh, councils or planning offices correspondence, they talk about the town of Ashwell, and it's not a town, it's a village, as Penelope Keith will verify from BBC Two on top 100 villages in the country. Uh, so ac pedestrian access from the site goes onto Ashwell Street, which is a <coughs> private road, not a council road, it then goes down onto Bear Lane, which has uh, no uh, pedestrian access at all. There are no pavements. Uh, and the only pedestrian access is down a flight of some 19 steps. Therefore, uh, impaired individuals, handicapped individuals, toddlers, etc., uh, cannot get access to the high street where the facilities of the village lie. Uh, that's one particular issue that there is no safe pedestrian access from the site into the village. Um, also I'd like to take issue with the change of the site from uh, AS3 to AS1. There have been several previous applications on this site, all of which have been rejected because it is an inadequate site and has been shown to be on numerous occasions. Uh, we also have uh, also had several safety audits done. Uh, three in total, as far as I'm concerned, or as far as I'm aware, two of which have said the site is unsafe. Uh, one, which happens to be done by the developer, says that the site is safe. Um, so you'd think that that particular survey had a vested interest in claiming that the site was safe. Uh, there's been a complete disregard for the village plan of Ashwell, which has been formulated, which has come up with uh, at least three separate sites within the existing boundary without any change of... This is, um, just uh, to help me out um, there, Dr. Ed, that that's a, a neighbourhood plan, is it? It is, yes. And I think uh, my colleague from the Parish Council will want to talk about that a bit later. Uh, again, this has been completely disregarded, even though it has um, several sites which are appropriate... Uh, for the further development of Ashwell, which we are not against. We're just against this particular site. Um, the allocation originally of houses or the allotment of houses uh, for the development of Ashwell, which was set a few years ago uh, in the tune of 60-odd houses, uh, has already been met and surpassed. So uh, the need for this development is questionable at the moment. Uh, there's been an overwhelming objection within the village to this uh, development. Not all developments, just this development. Um, whenever the uh, planning office has asked for uh, the village's opinion, they've given it. And the last one you know, to, to the tune of about 300 to 1 against this development. Um, so, again, that's about all I would like to add to it. I have my colleagues here who are going to expand on probably most of these points. Thank you, Dr. Eyre. Um, Councillor Short. Thank you. Um, I would uh, agree with what's just been said. Um, the neighbourhood plan uh, working group did look into the whole question of sites and came up with three other sites. We approached the uh, landowners, all of whom 
happy for development. It would have uh, provided more than 33, or the, the present number is for 30 dwellings on the site. So if you bear, um, with, me, bear with me just for a moment. More than 33, you say? Yes, at the moment, the, the, the present uh, planning application is now for 30 houses or dwellings on that site. But um, the, the three sites that were identified by the working group uh, would provide more than that. And more importantly, one of those sites in particular would provide the sort of housing that has been identified through questionnaires for the uh, working party for houses, for uh, older people, people and people who have got mobility uh, problems. These three sites were, um, or the District Council was informed about these sites in December 2015. And just, on... Uh, just let my, my note taking... Sorry, jump. beg your pardon. December 2015, you said? Yes. Yeah. And again, at a subsequent meeting that I had with one of the, 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 the planners involved, and uh, no recognition has been taken of this in the proposals that we have uh, before us now for the local plan. Um, taking up some of the other matters that were uh, uh, mentioned earlier on, um, Claybush Road does not have any footpaths, pavements along it, and the junction of Claybush Road with Ashwell Street is very tight, uh, with properties going right up to the, to the edge of the road, and is, is uh, dangerous, to say the least. Um, coming around there in a car can be uh, a problem if you've got people walking there. Uh, the, the, the prospect of some sort of uh, fatality or accident is very high. The other thing about the um, pedestrian access, if it was to come from the north of the south on that uh, strip of land going from the site to Ashwell Street, it not only goes onto a private roadway, but it then comes out onto a junction with uh, Ashwell Street at that point actually divides. And in between that division, there's seven houses being constructed at the present. And it does mean that people, especially children who are walking down to the school, would have to go across what can be a very dangerous, um, potentially dangerous uh, a junction. If you're then trying to get from there into the village, either by wheelchair or with a pram or buggy, you would have to walk in Bear Lane itself, which has a lot of uh, uh, park cars in it, and again, um, could be uh, potentially dangerous. I walk there quite often, and I make sure I go up, up the steps, uh, but then I can do it on my legs. Um, Moving to um, the, the other points, um, the views uh, and the, uh, of um, Ashwell from Claybush Road, as you come down from Claybush Hill to the village, you have straight ahead of you the, church, the Tower of St. Uh, of St Mary's Church, which is the highest tower in the county, uh, with a Hertfordshire spike on it. And um, this uh, site is just to the left of it. The plans that we have before us at the moment for the planning application, those dwellings of the same height as the houses that are already in um, uh, Claybush Road. Um, so it I, would make it quite an impact. Yeah, um, I, I have to be careful here. Um, I'm, I'm aware clearly that there is a planning application that's been submitted. Um, 
but I, I'm not here to make any judgment about that specific planning application. So, okay. that, so the details like that uh, that are in the application are, are, are not things for, for my judgment. What I wanted to do by s s uh, mentioning that yep. is to say the impact of those houses on that view from Claybush would be substantial. Um, The other thing to point out is, uh, is uh, yet again, is that uh, previous applications on this site have been rejected at appeal and for far less houses. Uh, for what reasons? Because of the impact on the view of the church. Mention was made earlier on of the heritage assessment. Um, the one for Ashwell, um, in, uh, on page, uh, it's not page, item four, that does the allocation meet the NPPF tests of soundness? So what document are you looking at there, Councillor? Heritage assessments. Um, Produced by the District Council in June 2016. Okay, if you, if you bear with me, I'll just check the reference number. I think it's document NHE1. NHE1. <coughs> and um, my apologies, what, what page was that? Sorry, uh, page 11. Page 11. NHE 1, page 11. If you bear with me a moment. Right. Uh, do you have a, a copy I have here? Doesn't. Oh, yes, it does. Right. Okay, I see. <coughs> Yeah. Just to say that the last paragraph of that um, and their conclusions does not uh, bear out um, a, a development of the site as the size that is being proposed at the moment. The proposed allocation of, of uh, 11.3, um, the Parish Council would have no uh, difficulty with that and as I've already mentioned, um, could see no harm in actually having more houses in Ashwell provided they were in places which were for the benefit of Ashwell and for the people who live there. Going on to 11.3, uh, sorry, 11.4, and going back to the map that you were looking at earlier on. When this was first proposed, the only change to the settlement boundary that was made was around AS1. And it is in the later... Um, versions of this, that the, or in this last version, that this has been put in. And the Parish Council is um, of the view that uh, proper consultation on the change of this boundary was not made. The inclusion of the uh, buildings in John Sale Close and Colbron Close, we would have no 
uh, objection to. The inclusion of what is called Walkden's extension, which is the... Sorry, that was... Um, I, I, uh, John sorry. Sale Close and what was the other one, sorry? Colbron Close. That's just yeah. next door to what's called Farrow's Farm. Yeah, I see it. The site, which is just north of the word tumulus on the right-hand side of the map, that has already been built on. Fifteen uh, dwellings were put up there uh, two years ago. And then just north of, north of that, uh, just north of the little junction that's there, there's a whole development there that um, has been built on. And um, the present boundary goes right through the middle of it. So that would be justified. But the inclusion of what is called the caravan site, or next to the caravan site, the site next to Ashridge Farm, um, is that actually a caravan site? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. The, um, where it says Ashridge Farm, just to the left of that, there is a dwelling there, and then there's three other fields where horses are grazed. And the um, uh, piece of land between... Um, just north of the words Hunts Ridge and off to the northeast from there. That whole section has just been put in without any uh, real consultation. It's the piece of land north of Ashwell Street. Yeah, okay, so, so this is the near where on the plan that I'm looking at it says caravan site, is that, is that right? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I've moved from to the left of that Okay. Um, to that large chunk of land south of the words recreation ground north of Hunts Ridge. Um, is that um, north of Lucas Lane? Is that where you mean? Uh, south of Lucas Lane. Oh, I see. Right, OK. I'm, I'm with you. That sort of block between Lucas Lane um, and Ashwell Street. So Most of that is, is, at the moment, agricultural land. So, sorry, just, just so I'm clear, is that supporting that inclusion of the land or, or opposing it? I'm not sure if we're... I was about right. to check that. Yeah, sorry, thank you. No, um, yeah. uh, that's not supporting not it supporting yeah, at for, any way. So it's the caravan site part. You, you object to that, if I have yes. that right. And um, that, that block that you've just described, um, north of where on the planet says Hunts Bridge. <coughs> Correct. And also the, the piece of land to the, um, to the left of the words Ash Ridge Farm. These were put in, some of these sites were put in in a later al land allocation, which the Neighbourhood Working Party, um, using our, our criteria, which were based on those of the District Council, we objected to, and none of them have been put forward. So this is a windfall, but not taking the... The, the, the changes in the boundaries here, et cetera, don't take, take into account the sort of uh, dwellings that are needed in Asheville. I think the, the Parish Council would be unhappy with the inclusion of the, the site on Green Lane as well. Um, you, you think they would be? Well, um, no, they would be. I, I'm sorry, I, uh, they, they, they are um, unhappy with that. <coughs> So, 
just sorry to interrupt, Seb, but just so I'm clear as to what's being said, um, Councillor Short. So if if we look at the proposed extension to the settlement boundary, um, the proposed extension all around the Ash Ridge Farm to the north and south of Ashwell Street, you're saying that that should not be extended, as well as the area of land between <coughs> Lucas Lane and Ashwell Street. Is, is, have I understood that correctly, that th those extensions should not be in the plan? Correct. Yeah. And also the caravan site itself. But the, the yes, the caravan site. But just to the uh, east, uh, sorry, the west of the caravan site, there is a development that is uh, Philosopher's Gate, it's called, which obviously should be within the, the boundary of the, of the village. It's there already. <clears throat> I think I've covered the points that I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hare. Oh, good morning, sir. Uh, <clears throat> I'd just like to paint the picture of Ashwell and where this site is relations in relationship to the village. If one was travelling north over the Bullock uh, Chalk, North Chalk Uplands, three miles, you come to Claybush Hill. Claybush Hill is one approximately 100 metres above the village. To the left or to the west is a scheduled ancient monument, Arbury Banks, which incidentally has not been included in nearly all the documentation submitted by North Arts District Council. They have said it's not within or there is no scheduled monument near or within, which seems strange for them to come out now and say that it, it, it is close. And it skewed some of the information that has been put forward. To the <coughs> east of uh, the view is a, a site of special interest. And the cumulus that you referred to, people, was found to be a 5,000-year-old hinge, which had been built over. Uh, uh, my apologies, of what? Sorry? Uh, I, I didn't catch what you said. A 5,000-year-old hinge, timber-framed hinge. Now under concrete. As you look to the centre of the view, there's St Mary's Church, which dis was described by the inspector when they viewed the plan application in 1987. Said it was, and I quote, the eyes being drawn to the exceptional fine west tower of St Mary's Church. When he was considering this, he was considering four bungalows and one would suspect that his view to view two-story houses, 30 of them, uh, would uh, certainly change his mind because he actually says four bungalows would be visible at all times of the year and be an unsightly intrusion into the attractive open landscape and consolidate a ribbon development into a more dense and intrusive form. You have a copy of this, sir? Or it was part of the information that I sent originally. <clears throat> this view not only looks down to this medieval village but 
the panoramic view stretches to the south gate of Wimpole Hall, which is some 20 miles away. The site is directly in the middle of all this and was described by the Oxford East, which was North Arts District Council's uh, advisor, that the uh, Claybush Hill was a funereal landscape which is dotted with, and I quote, <coughs> where are we? <coughs> Neolithic, bronze, Roman, medieval and post-medieval graves. They also advise... Sorry, med medieval and post-medieval what? Yes, uh, graves. <coughs> or I, stu I still didn't graves. catch the word, my apologies. Graves. The graves? Grave. Yes, I'm sorry, it's my northern accent. <coughs> Just a little nearer the microphone. Sorry? Just a little nearer the microphone. Oh, sorry. <coughs> They also stated, this is Oxford East, which was North Arts District Council's uh, advisors at the time, said that any development on this land, <coughs> if it wasn't to impact on the view from the ancient monument or the scheduled ancient monument, an Iron Age fort, a hill fort, they would only advise building on the north west northeast corner, and no dwelling should be more than one and a sorry one and a half stories. This was actually <coughs> dismissed by the the council, obviously because the developer couldn't sustain that sort of development with the cost he would have to pay for the, the land. <clears throat> I would also like to bring to the attention that I would like to use, if it's possible, three documents, or refer to three documents, and I state North Arts District Council, July 2009, land allocation, additional sites, Ashwell Site 3. Sustainable appraisal summary. Also, North Arts District Council... Uh, my, my, my apologies. Uh, are you going to ask me to look at those now? Well, uh, that's what I'm going to revert, refer to, sir. Okay. So, I mean... He, he the, the, no, that, that's fine. I'll tell you, if you give me the list now, I'll, um, I'll get okay. all the documents out. I, I have, if you want. But, um, I've got a, a list of these, and I can let you have at the end, if you like. If that will be more... If, if you're going to refer me to specific paragraphs, I, I, I well, can... Well, yes. It's, uh, I can get you to the different pages of the different documents, if yeah. that helps. Yeah. Okay, so the first document was... The first document is <coughs> the uh, local authorities' July 2009 land allocation stroke additional sites, Ashwell Site 3, sustainable approval summary, which is <coughs> this document, sir. Um, I don't suppose you happen to know the, um, the reference, do you? As you'll appreciate, I have oh, yes, many, sure. many documents Absolutely. in my examination <laughs> library, so it's getting me to the right thing, you see. So, so I, I don't think these are in court examination documents. Are they not? No, no, because, they're because of their age, 2009. But I don't think they're the evidence base that's informed this plan. Ah, oh. excuse me, sir. Uh, the, I think it's relevant because it actually shows that the 
procedures have not been adhered to to make this plan sound. Do you want to um, yes, sure. take, take me briefly uh, through yes, the point? The items which are actually ident identify as the strength of this AS1, or as they term it, Site 3. It says, there is no historical monument with or near the site. Seems strange that now they've actually, North Arts District Council have said it's close. And that's in the strength column. It also says that <coughs> the site is within walking distance of the village centre and the recreation ground. When it, this site is identified as for fit, able people, all other people are to use cars or private taxis. I, I know the point you're going to now, so, yeah. <coughs> so, it seems to me that I understand the well-phrased well and well-used method of assessing strengths and weaknesses by using a tick box and going through it. The problem with the tick box system is some ticks get dropped in the wrong box, and that's what seems to happen here. I would also like to, uh, there's other elements on here that if you see the document, so you, it follows the same trend. But I'll refer you now to North Arts District Council, local plan, reference options, appendix seven, dot four seven, site matrices, revised, September 2014. <coughs> and Do we know the reference for that one? We'll, we'll find it. Um, it's the 2014, I think, sustainability appraisal that was added to the examination library, which obviously is a predecessor to the current sustainability appraisal, which forms the evidence base for the plan. I think it's OLP7, but OLP7 is a whole host of um, documents, and I, I think um, it's Appendix 7 that's being referred to. It has been sent through the post to the inspector via uh, Louise and John Hannah. My part, I didn't catch that, Mr. Hare. It has been sent to you uh, through your... Uh, through Louise. Is it with your hearing statement? It is part of the set, yes, sir. I'm sure it is. I have, I'll tell you what I have in front of me um, is sustainability appraisal and SEA of the um, local plan preferred options, Appendix 7, appraisal of preferred sites, significance criteria, summaries, and matrices dated November 2014. Is that the right yes. thing? Okay, and um, are you going to take me to a specific yes, page? Yes, just through, through some of the... Uh, it's the research and the, that's been used has been not as well done as one might have thought. And the procedure of logging those, uh, that information, 
has been misplaced. It, in that document, it also states that there is no historical monument within or near this site. Tick dropped into the wrong box. The site is within walking distance of the village. We've already mentioned that. But the village is 400, yard, 400 meters north, uh, north of the site. And as we've said, Claybush Hill is, the site is approximately 60 meters higher than the village, making any, any foot traffic down that, uh, down the slope is quite treacherous in different conditions. I live in Claybush Road and for 30 years, and I have a lot of experience trying to negotiate uh, the the junction as uh, the councillor short has already mentioned that from claybush road to ashwell street not only is there no pavements but there's two blind bends and the advent of electric cars have made it even more difficult I was nearly killed about a year ago and reported it to the Paris Council and the county, uh, but nothing was done. But anyway, that's a different story. I would also like to bring to your attention, it says the site does not border a watercourse, which is true. But it doesn't mention in the assessment that there's a paleo channel running south to north with a suspected subterranean stream running underneath it, which was only found when houses was being built nearby. And this has been raised with a local flood team which they have refused even to investigate. Question, why? The other element that is, seems strange, they identify that the railway station, local railway station, is one kilometre from the centre of the village. Having taken my car and driven this at least backwards and forwards and divided the distance, it is 3.5 kilometers, tick in the wrong box. It also says that there is no landfill within 250 meters. I know it's only marginally, but it's 160 meters. It has been painted, in my view, from conception to inclusion in the land allocation, as being skewed in favour of inclusion. And I think the reason I know that why that happened, it was mentioned by the planning officers earlier, that there was two other sites put up at the same time in 2008, which was included in the suggested sites. The landowner, who also owns AS1, also owned the other two sites. He realized that he'd been denied planning permission since 1987 three times, including going to the inspector. He knew how difficult it was, so he withdrew the two other sites to leave the council in an invidious position of only having one site and having housing numbers to comply with. This, I think, as perhaps, and it's only my view, 
has actually tempted the skewing, or not, not, not purposely, but skewing the information to make it look more acceptable than it is by the, by the elements that I've brought to your attention. I would also like to say that the, the question of the fit, able people, and it's actually identified in their documentation. This is discriminatory. It's not only that, but what happens as there is 40% or proposed 40% uh, low-cost housing, what happens if there's a young family that hasn't got the means to have their own transportation? And the only way that they can access the doctors or the pharmacists or the shop have to run the gauntlet down the dangerous uh, route into the village, which seems rather strange. It has been also been noted that the in the site-specific requirements criteria, it states that AS1 must provide a access into the village to access the the uh, amenities and facilities. Yet, in their submission, they're only considering 30 metres of this access, which is only the, the distance from the proposed pedestrian access onto this private carriageway and just onto the junction of Bear Lane and Asheville Street. Which is, as everybody has, has said, is dangerous. The slope there is something like, and when I measured it, it was one in when this gets icy, it is impossible to navigate it properly. I would also say that the, this particular private carriageway is only uh, in old money, just over nine, just over nine and a half feet. When the vehicles, especially the refuge vehicles try to navigate this. They reverse up this up the private carriageway because there's no facilities to turn around. Anybody that's walk that's walking the pedestrians that's egressing the site AS1 will actually enter this private carriageway at 90 degrees. This pedestrian access is also used by the vehicles from neighboring property. The sight lines required for that is, as I remember, 2.4 meters from vehicle to vehicle. And the obstruction on each side of this carriageway, this uh, access, is bounded by hedges that do not belong to the landowner. So to gain this access, they would have to enter into a third party agreement, which I understand is, will not be forthcoming. Sorry, are, are you talking about the vehicular access onto Claybrush Road? No, the, I'm talking about the pedestrian access onto the private carriageway to Asheville Street. Right. And so, I, I, in which case, I, I haven't quite followed that point. So, um, the idea um, is to have the 
pedestrian access from the site going northwards onto Ashwell Street, which you say is a private and narrow um, road. It is. I mean, clearly, you know, I'll, I'll see all of this when I yeah, go, sure, out, sure. go out onto, yeah. uh, go, well, go out and visit. Um, but just so I get the point about the visibility, where, where was the visibility issue? Well, uh, the houses on either side of the proposed uh, pedestrian access have their garages facing inwards onto the proposed pedestrian access. So that for them to exit their own property, they have to use the proposed pedestrian access. And as vehicles are using Ashwell, the private carriageway known as Ashwell Street, <coughs> then they need vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle sight lines. I, I get it now. Okay. I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> the, the problem, as I see it, with this particular site <coughs> is that if the local authority think it's only fit for fit, able people, I can't see how they can put it forward <coughs> as a reasonable reason to actually build on it. <coughs> I would also like to bring to your attention that the as the local authority has mentioned that the access, the vehicular access into Claybush Road, from Claybush Road into the proposed development, has done a road safety audit using a model which is, in my opinion, flawed. The reason I say that is because as you was uh, adjudicating or, what, or looking at the proposals from Bygrave Road on Tuesday where there's a proposed 2,800 homes that are going to be built or proposed to be built. The model they have used to assess the traffic impact has not been used in conjunction with the traffic assessment that they've used on the access that they require to get the vehicle access, they need to get into the proposed development site in Ashwell. Bearing in mind that the shortest distance from Bygrave to Cambridge is via Ashwell and the neighbouring village, it seems rather strange that they didn't use a model that would take this into consideration. One can only assume the reason is that the number of vehicles from 2,800 properties would generate so much traffic that it would skew or not be able to justify that access into the field, in, into this AS1. I would also like to say that the, this traffic that's going to be generated from AS1 is said that it will support local businesses to justify or mitigate the additional traffic that will be uh, generated from AS1. I have a letter that I can send to you, and I think it was raised at the Paris Council meeting yesterday, that the shopkeepers are saying that if there is any more traffic or parking, their business is no longer viable and they will have to close. I think that when you visit Ashwell, you will realize the implication. I did a survey 
or last year, uh, for the parish council, for the neighbourhood plan, where I counted 100 and I think it was 187 cars parked on Ashwell Street, the main road that runs through Ashwell Street. I also counted 87 on Back Street, and I think it was 65 on Silver Street. You can imagine that the village is, day and night, is totally congested. And I think that anybody that knows Ashwell and been through it as would recognise that description. In fact, during a discussion with the district council, one of the district councillors of North Arts District Council, he admitted that he was the person that should have been looking at the parking and the traffic problems in Ashwell. We've had to in invest for two to, uh, or one uh, speed restriction sign to slow everybody down and I doubt if, if there was any need, really serious need, for an emergency vehicle, a fire engine, it would be, depending on the traffic in, on, I, I, on the high street, if he would be able to negotiate where he was going to go. That's how difficult the traffic is. And this particular site is in the wrong place. It actually requires people to use their cars because not everybody is fit able that's it sir thank you Mr Hare <coughs> um, I just wanted to be sure that there's, um, because I've given you quite a bit of microphone time there, yes, uh, yes, Mr. Hare. Is there anything else that you wanted to say? If, if so, then very briefly now, and I, I won't come back to you. I don't think that's the Okay, the thank sorry? you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, I can't see your name plate. Uh, it's though. Mrs. George, Amelia George. Uh, Mrs. George. Yeah. So you turn it around. Yes, you're, you're telling everyone else who you are, but, um, but not me. Ms. Mrs. George. Yes, I, I won't be too long, sir. Just a few points I'd like to add. You need the microphone, by the way. Oh, okay. So, um, John Hare referred to the matrices, and I have also have a copy of the site matrices that he referred to. And the council mentioned that um, these weren't used in the deliberations for putting um, Claybush Field known as site AS1 on the, um, the local plan. But I would say that nothing has changed since these um, matrices were formed. The, um, the situation is just the same. And so when the matrices refer to the site as being suitable only for fit and fit abled people, is the expression, fit hyphen abled, that hasn't changed. It still would only be suitable for people who are, are fit abled. And it suggests in the matrices that private transport will be used. And it in fact says that this will create congestion. And John Hare, of course, has gone into some detail about the, um, the increase in, um, in congestion that will inevitably arise from um, developing this field. Um, just to add, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating, John, but it says here, the elderly and disabled will require private transport in the form of taxis or private cars, suggesting that the mitigation is to improve public transport access. Well, there's no sign of extra buses um, going through Ashwell at the moment, um, so the, I think that's pretty pie in the sky. Um, can I refer you to a, um, a local application that was rejected recently, um, proposal for 46 dwellings on Station Road in Ashwell? And I've got a copy of the decision, which I'm happy to give you, but um, just to give you some of the particulars, because they, the, the, it, it is a similar scenario to the one that 
is suggested in AS1, a similar number of buildings. So just to, to summarise here the council's decision to refuse permission, by reason of its siting beyond the built limits of Ashwell, similar, it would fail to positively enhance the wider landscape setting of the village, nor would it improve the character and quality of the rural area. Um, the harm is considered to clearly outweigh the benefits of providing new dwellings on the site. Um, again, separated from the main body of Ashwell Village, heavily urbanising impact on the character and appearance of the rural area against the pattern and grain of existing development and poorly integrated with Ashwell Village. Uh, such a piecemeal form of development would, as a result, harm the character and appearance of the locality. Number three, given the lack of essential services in the vicinity of the site, in particular a lack of primary education provision to serve the needs of this development. Well, Ashwell School is absolutely full. Um, it was until recently a school that um, was taking 38 children per year. The um, Hertfordshire County Council approximately 18 months ago agreed to reduce the PAN for Ashwell School to 30. Um, question mark whether the PAN ever was at 38, but uh, at, a, at one point the school was taking 38 per year. Now taking 30 per year, Ashwell School is full. Um, as you've heard before, Ashwell has um, adopted quite a significant amount of new housing in the last five years. Um, obviously that has had an impact on the school and there are children who live in Ashwell at the moment being denied places at the school um, because of the rate of increase of housing. Um, just going back to the, uh, the, the refusal letter for the uh, Station Road site, um, Given this and the large-scale nature of the proposal, this development should be regarded as likely to have an impact on significant heritage assets with archaeological interest. Um, again, you've had some information about the heritage in Ashwell Village. Um, if I could just make some comments on the aspect of safety on Claybush Hill. I live on Ashwell Street. <clears throat> I live on that bit of private road that, uh, or unadopted road, that's just been discussed. It's hardly wider than a footpath, um, so when you visit it, you'll, you'll see that for yourself. It's a, a little unmade, bumpy track. Um, sorry, I'm talking about Ashwell Street a, I'm right. diverging. I'll come back to Claybush Hill in a minute. So Ashwell Street is a little bumpy track. The proposal is that pedestrians from the proposed site would, would use um, Ashwell Street as a footpath to gain access to the village. Well, I, refuse vehicles do reverse back down Ashwell Street. So I'm at the end of Ashwell Street. It's a, a dead end. So they drive up face on and then they reverse back down yeah, I, 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 the street. I, I have that point. Okay. Do you, are you aware that there have been at least two child fatalities in the last 10 years, not in Ashwell Street, I hasten to add, but one in the Kettering area and one in Cambridgeshire I'm aware of. Um, it's not just refuse lorries that reverse down Ashwell Street because there's nowhere else to turn. Any van that, that comes up the road um, or, or car that, um, that doesn't belong to one of the houses ends up reversing down the road. And then moving on to Claybush Hill um, and safety on that hill, um, just anecdotally, I have a friend who lives at the top of Claybush Hill uh, who's brought up her children up there who you don't see her walking down Claybush Hill. She drives her car down Claybush Hill. I suspect that that would be the preferred mode of transport for most families who would be on that site. 
accessing the village. They'd be driving up and down Claybush Hill into the village. And lastly, you heard that um, Ashwell Village has a caravan site. It actually has a very active, um, well-used caravan site for holiday makers. Ashwell is a very pretty village with a historic church, with ancient springs. It has a museum. It's an old medieval town, originally a town, um, now a village. It has a few shops, a butcher's, a baker's, a chemist. Um, it, it has become extremely congested. I've noticed a, a massive change on the high street in the last couple of years with traffic, um, anger amongst um, people trying to use it because Ashwell High Street is, is basically one way because of parking. Um, I'm concerned that this development, this proposed development, would, would, would add significantly to that congestion. There is one more point, and I don't know, I'm, I'm afraid, I apologise, I missed the first part of the meeting, and I know that you did ask for some information about legal access to, uh, to the proposed site, the Claybush Field site. Um, and there has been discussion of, amongst the local residents about um, the legal access along Ashwell Street that's proposed for pedestrians um, and reference to an enclosure award. Can I just very, very briefly say that, and if it hasn't been pointed out already, and I apologize if it has, that the enclosure award, if it does in fact benefit um, the, the Claybush field still, because it's an 1862 award. If it does, it only refers to two-thirds of the field. There is a third of Claybush field that will in no circumstances benefit from the enclosure award, because when the award was made, it was made only in respect of certain enclosures. The other enclosures, those Bound, that, that had a boundary against Claybush Hill had access in and out of the enclosures on Claybush Hill and so did not need the benefit of access onto Ashwell Street. So there's the conundrum because if the, if, if that, if the enclosure ward is found to benefit um, a part of the field, it will only benefit part of any development there. And so that people on that development who are on the wrong part of the development won't be able to get in and out of Ashwell Street legally. I hope that makes some sense. I do have copies of the, the enclosure maps if you want to have a look, but um, if you were already aware of the, the background, then that make, 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 should make sense. I mean, I've, I've read um, what's been given to me um, in, in representations and in uh, most recently in the statements. Okay. I'm not, because I didn't make a representation, I'm here instead of Graham Lee. I know he didn't put that in his representation, so I'm not sure that that was part of the representations in writing that have been given to you. Um, why didn't he? Why didn't I? He. Why didn't he? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I can only assume that um, he didn't think I, I needed to see it. Right. I mean, th this isn't the time for, for new evidence, but, um, you know, I, I, I understand the point. Um, Thank you. And, that's all I need uh, to know. And I think that that's, that has been quite clearly made to me in, in the representations and in, in the statements as well. So, you know, I, I understand what's what. I'm sure. Thank you, sir. Okay. And anything else that you wanted to um, say, Mrs. George, while, no. while you have the microphone? <laughs> Thank you. And um, lo last chance for you, Dr. Eyre, so uh, yeah, yeah, don't so hold back. <laughs> I'd just like to come back to, I think, um, rather Miss Leach or Mr. Constable said that they would mitigate uh, the effect of the development uh, by giving money to the school and uh, to the doctors. 
whereas in fact you can't just give money to doctors. They are under contract with a local health authority um, and they are uh, obligated to see the patients that they're paid for. Uh, you can't just give them more money and say see more people because it's a resource issue. Similarly with the school has already been mentioned. Um, you can't give money to the school and say take more people if they don't have the room or the teachers to do that. So any mitigating circumstances that is being proposed by the planning office to offset the increased number of people who are going to be living in Ashwell will make absolutely no difference whatsoever to these facilities which are already overstretched. Okay, um, are there any um, other objections, um, if I can put it that way, um, to be raised from this side? Okay, Mr. Booth. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, you have my uh, statement on this, uh, on this matter. Um, I just wanted to quickly refer back to your uh, questions. 11.3 um, is the proposed allocation the most appropriate option given the reasonable alternatives? It appears that the council's position is that there are no reasonable alternatives. Um, the Schla assessment prov provides effectively one site, and um, even with the um, even with the concerns that, that some of the objectors have raised, uh, which are referenced in the uh, sustainability appraisal and by the council in terms of potential impacts, the council position appears to be that um, because of the need for housing and because there are no reasonable alternatives, um, that is the site that needs to be uh, to, to be given. Um, uh, comments in, in previous sessions in terms of the methodology for the Schla, um, which is now, uh, uh, I think it's a few weeks off being uh, two years since the actual cutoff for, for um, considering which sites um, are actually, bit, actually um, included in the Schla. Um, my client um, obviously has a site um, which is put into the statement, and um, uh, there was a reference from Councillor Shore that um, uh, the neighbourhood plan put sites to the council, um, which it would, it would appear also aren't, aren't in the Schla. Um, so the question, my question really Sorry, is... Sorry, I, I didn't quite catch that bit, Mr Booth. Did you, did you say that you're... Because I'm, I'm pretty soon going to stop you, because you, you know that I'm, I'm not talking about omission Absolutely, sites, sir, yes. No, and, I'm, I, and I've explained I, I the reason for that before. You. But yes. Um, did, did, I, did, you, did you say that um, the site that you're talking about is one that um, the neighbourhood planning group... No, no, it wasn't. No, sir. Right. Um, I'm just making the point that there, uh, th there appears to, to be other sites um, suggested around this table that do not appear in the Schla. And I appreciate you don't want to go into the details of emission sites, but if the question is at 11.3, is this the most appropriate one given reasonable alternatives, then surely the question should be, well, are there actually alternatives? Because it doesn't appear the council found any in their methodology for the Schla. I suggest that highlights the flaw. Okay, is there anything else from this side of the table? Well, uh, no. Um, it was just a comment that something was made. I'll, I'll take something very, very brief from okay. you, Mr. Uh, the question of the additional sites was encouraged by the North Arts District Council planners in the neighborhood plan and the sites that was chosen would you believe there's only one really flat piece of land adjacent to all of the services including the doctors the church and mainly the pub which is identified for the elderly including perhaps an old people's home now if the council thinks that's inappropriate I don't know what is. The other two sites were brownfield sites, which I do believe are take precedent or should be considered before using greenfield sites. Thank you. Is there anything else from um, this side of the table, as it were? Because what I'm going to do is ask the, the council for their, their, their final comments, um, and, and then I'll, I'll move on. Well, in fact, I'll take the morning break. 
Is it you I should be looking looking at, Ms. Leach? I will um, start off, and I think that my colleagues will. Um, I will start off, and, and my colleagues will um, um, contribute as necessary. Um, in terms of um, the point that was picked up about um, contributions to um, the school and the doctors, that's a normal um, obligation of part of the planning process. So any any um, uh, site or any uh, any planning permission would be required to provide um, those kind of obligations. Um, the um, uh, Harpeter County Council um, can Education. I, can I Ms. Lynch, can I ask you to speak up, please? The Harpeter County Council Education um, Services have um, provided in their Matter 11 statement, they have confirmed that they consider um, that the proposed housing allocation is deliverable and justified with regard to the impact mm -hmm. it may have on school places. Just for a moment. So, so yes, if you turn to yeah. paragraph three of the county council's response um, in their capacity as education authority, um, you will see that the advice received from the um, from the education authority is that the current demographic analysis shows that the yield from the proposed new housing is likely to be able to be accommodated within the existing school capacity, obviously subject to a contribution. site um, is reasonably close to the, the centre of the village. Um, existing residents use um, the routes um, into the town. So, you know, a similar routes would be used by um, uh, new um, residents of um, this um, allocation, site allocation. Um, In terms of um, people um, who choose to live on that site, people will naturally decide whether that is the right um, house in the right um, location for them in terms of whether they find um, the location acceptable and the, the amenities. Um, so um, in terms of issues regarding um, accessibility, um, people will decide themselves whether they feel that is a, an appropriate location um, to live. Um, in, in terms of the access for the site, there's been some discussions raised about um, pedestrian access along um, uh, Ashwell Street. It is my understanding that um, this issue is going to be um, addressed at a land registry tribunal in the autumn. Um, there, is, there is to be a tribunal, is there? Yes. And um, how reliant is the delivery of this site on the outcome of that? I would say that's fairly well. There are two possible um, pedestrian access uh, routes from the site into the village, one of which is along Ashwell Street, the other is along Claybush Road. Um, both are being investigated, but a, a, con a conclusion has not been yet reached on either one in terms of a successful um, pedestrian route. Um, when you say both are being investigated, can you just clarify that for me? 
Sarah, so, so it's, it, it's my understanding that there are two um, ways in which um, pedestrian access can be obtained from this site. The first is, as you've um, had explained to you, is through the sliver of land onto Ashwell Street, That's the, which is, as I understand it, going to the tribunal. And the alternative is um, along Claybush Road and the potential for the creation of some sort of footpath along that road. Um, you will have seen, in respect to the re representations made by Crowdace Home, that there's a legal opinion in that from Mr. David Forsdyke, Queen's Council, about the um, legality of um, the use um, of the pedestrian access onto Ashwell Street. Um, but obviously, the, the outcome of that will be known in um, at, the, at the end of the year. Um, certainly, his advice is that there is legal access achievable um, along that strip of land. Um, and uh, does... Um Access along is access uh, p the potential for access along Claybush Road affected in any way by um, the, the, the land registry tribunal or the, or the legal yes, issue? Yeah. Uh, that, that's what I, I thought, but yeah. um, right, okay. In, in, in so far as the um, accessibility of the site is concerned, obviously, so that's a matter that you'll be able to go to Ashwell and judge for yourself as to how accessible the site is to the. Um, village facilities, you've heard that actually that Ashwell is a um, village that is well endowed with local facilities, that's been explained to you, and you'll be able to judge for yourself how, how accessible this site really is to those facilities. Um, you, you've heard that s s some of the um, um, people who've made representations to you, they live in Ashwell Street, um, it, it, it's actually extremely well located to, to the um, centre of the village. In so far as the um, heritage implications of the site are concerned, just before we move away yes. from um, the access point, yes. um, just so I'm absolutely clear, I think that the council's position, as I understand it, is well, um, you know, there are potentially two accesses here. Um, if it turns out that there is um, a legal impediment um, to using the pedestrian access northwards um, onto Ashwell Street, then the council says, does it? Um, that doesn't matter um, because um, there is the potential for pedestrian access along Claybush Road. Yes, I mean, so obviously um, people can walk along Claybush Road as matters currently stand. Um, one assumes that the residents who already live on Claybush Road um, do that from time to time. Um, you'll see that um, AS1, the first criteria, um, requires provision of pedestrian access into the village. And um, in, in, in my submission, there are two opportunities to, to achieve that. Okay. Um, in so far as um, heritage is concerned, um, you will see that there's any one when a heritage um, impact assessment has been undertaken in respect of this site. Um, that's been um, explained uh, to you. That takes into account the existence of the scheduled ancient monument to the southwest of the site and also the grade one listed um, church um, and the spire and the tower in the center of the village. Um, that is recognized in policy AS1, which um, requires that the third bullet point for a heritage impact assessment to be undertaken to inform the design and layout of the site um, as I understand it from that any one assessment, there is no in principle objection to the allocation of the site, subject, of course, to those two features being adequately and appropriately addressed at the design stage. Um, no doubt um, I'll be corrected if I've got that wrong. You have that correct. So uh, ultimately, um, the, the issue that you're going to have to um, grapple with is firstly whether or not the settlement boundary has been appropriately drawn. Um, you've heard from Ms. Veach as to why um, she is saying the settlement boundary is now being um, drawn as it is. Um, you've heard from the parish council that they would wish that uh, boundary to be more tightly drawn, and you're just going to have to... To, to, take a, to take a view on that. And obviously the second issue is to whether or not AS1 is an appropriate allocation. Um, but, it, but in essence, um, it, it seems to me that the two big issues um, are 
firstly, heritage, and secondly, um, accessibility. Those are the points that are taken um, against the site, and, and you've had our, had our views on that. In, in so far as the, um, the, the site on Station Road is concerned, um, obviously, you know, e each site turns on its own facts and circumstances. Um, this council is not seeking the allocation of that site. Um, it's this site that, that you need to um, need to concentrate on. And in so far as the parish council is concerned, I, ha I have to say I'm not I'm not really clear as to whether or not the parish council are in fact um, suggesting that it is appropriate for additional land to be um, allocated over and above what is um, currently shown on the Ashwell plan. Um, uh, it seems that what they are seeking to do is to restrict development rather than increase the opportunity for it, and we'll just have to again take take a, take a view uh, take a view on that. Um, the neighbourhood plan, as I understand it, has not um, reached um, a particularly progressed stage, but of course, um, if the parish council wish to allocate um, more land over and above what is proposed in this pl plan, then then that is not precluded as part of the neighbourhood planning process. I'll just check whether there's any additional points that anyone wants to add on this side of the room. So I, th I think that's, that's it from us. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, unless there is anything else to be said on Ashwell. Very good. Then I make it uh, 10.56. I'll adjourn the hearing to resume um, in this room at 11.15. Thank you.